That was weird. Hold on. Good morning. I can't see you if you're coming in. Hey, Jana. Hi, Nina. Gosh, sorry, guys. Uh, I thought I had this in the tripod. Uh, it's just going to be weird today. Hi. The angle's all strange. Hey, Catherine, Tanya. Um, this angle is weird. I do not have big bobs. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I had some surgery. So weird. Twin day. Yes. Good morning. They both have snotty noses. They're running around back there. I'm sure we have about 2.5 minutes before they notice I'm actually doing something and come running. <laughs> I know. And Nina was like, wow. If we get any trolls today, they may be interested in the weird angle. Um, camera phones are just horrible, right? You don't really look like you really look, or you don't look like you think you look, let's say that. Um, today, twin day today. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I sure will. Right. Ew. Yeah. Yikes. Um, oh, the twins. Yes. I was like trolls. Ew. Ew. Yeah. The twins. They follow. Um, and they both have runny noses today. I don't think they're sick. I think they have allergies. Anyway, they're entertained at the moment. So let's see what, how much we can get done. I watched Laughing Linda. Oh, it's terrible. Um, Sarah Ballard's mom doing a scope last night. She's so cute. And I wasn't even able to watch all of it. But the whole time she's like trying to get uh, the five-year-old Aurelia off her <laughs> trying to do her scope. Fighting off her grandkids. So I was like, yeah, this isn't going to get any better. Oh, yeah. I do enjoy it. Like their little faces is what gets me up at four in the morning to get down here. Um, I do enjoy it. I know, right? So, um, my husband will be down Saturday, so it'll be a little easier. He's coming down with me this on Saturday. So, um, today in the Holy Shift book, the only sentence was, um, all healing is release from the past. Oh, it's super cute. It's so cute. Um, Aurelia is just like all over her. And she wants to show people her iPad. And she, so she was just like um, trying to get her scope around the kids. And um, I, I could so relate. <laughs> so you can tell you get that look on your face like. <laughs> um, so holy shift for today is all healing is release from the past. Right. But they want to watch my video game. This comes from chapter 13, if you're following along in the text. The text is the hardest part to handle in this book. It's the wordiest. Um, it's got the weird grammatical structure. But this one's pretty clear. All healing is released from the past. So it's section 8, from perception to knowledge. So it's from intellectual understanding to knowledge internal. The chapter is called The Guiltless World. Um, bottom line, this whole section is, is that the past only exists in our mind. And the past exists, exists as our story gives it form. So two people have one experience and have very different stories about what happened. So you can't say that the the past really exists outside of the mind. I mean, we can talk space-time continuums, Star Trek quantum stuff, uh, Einstein things. But um, first of all, I'm not that smart. Second of all, I haven't had enough coffee. And third of all, it doesn't make any difference anyway. <laughs> the story is the only thing that's going to change your life. It's your point of power, your connection to source gives you the awareness of the stories that you tell yourself because when you have that moment it's like being in the dark and flipping on the light then you're like oh I was in the dark yeah one experience two stories that's why um, court cases are so difficult when you have multiple witnesses because everyone sees a different 
and everyone um, tells a different story in their head about what they saw. So when you have had the experience of being connected to Source and even momentarily being totally free of the stories that you tell yourself every day, when your stories come back, you start to see them for what they are. You start to recognize that I could tell a different story around this if I wanted to. And do I want to? And what story do I want to tell now? So do I want to tell the story that um, I was robbed at gunpoint and that means I have to be scared of the world now? Or, or do I want to tell the story of I was robbed at gunpoint and now I want to be an advocate for victim services? Or I was robbed at gunpoint, period, and leave it at that. Or I was robbed at gunpoint and it made me make some different decisions, which led me down some different pathways. And there's like several different stories you can tell even about your own incidents. So we've, we've talked about that before where you take the facts and then you look at what you're tacking on to the end of it. I had a car wreck. What comes after that? That's the story. That's the part you can change. And actually part of post-traumatic stress disorder treatment for some people is taking the event, writing the story that they tell about it, and then deliberately writing a different, a completely different story. Even if they don't believe it, um, it changes how the brain processes it. Because now the brain's got two stories. It doesn't really know which one to pick. So it kind of lets go of its hold on both, and things can start to shift and start to process. Um, Post-traumatic events make our brain get stuck in a loop. So we perceive something, we experience an emotion. Any emotion attached to an event embeds it in your memory more firmly. It makes it harder to get out. It makes it harder to change. Oh, my. The sounds of frustration. Um, so when you attach emotion to an event, you've, you've really drilled it in there. The chemicals and things that go with memory processing can get stuck in a loop. So a, a traumatic event, event, say just something simple like a car wreck, people can have recurring dreams of the impact or intrusive thoughts of the fear, and they just go over and over and over. It's like the brain is stuck in this endless loop. Bilateral tapping, this, EMDR, um, things that... We don't know why, but alternate tapping on the body, bilateral, you'll hear it called bilateral stimulation, is helps, for some reason, helps the brain produce the chemicals that stop the looping and put it into memory where it can just sit. During that process, the story may sometimes automatically change, or if you're deliberately trying to change your interpretation of the event, it's easier. This, use, this was taught, so it's called the butterfly. You cross your arms and you just alternate tap in a rhythm about this speed. So a little bit faster than you might feel entirely comfortable with while you're thinking about the stressful thing. Um, they use that on children in Bosnia. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of children in Bosnia. Hey, hey, here. She's mad because she wanted her toy up on the treadmill. And it wasn't working for her. You ever notice that Ashlyn's always the one that grabs the noisiest toy? <laughs> Here, we're plan we've planned ahead, so let's stuff this with things. Here you go. Look, there's stuff in here. Here, here. we're not doing that one. Here, we're going to do this one. This is going to go right here for a little bit. And you can have that, and you can have the can of puffs. Get the lid off of that there, kid. <laughs> Kids in Bosnia. Children had seen horrific things. They had them do art therapy, and then they had them do series of this while they were thinking about and talking about what happened. And then they had them do art therapy again 
So, and their pictures changed from, you know, bloody gory pictures to normal kid pictures of, you know, puppies and kittens and family and stuff. So, it's not so easy to say, uh, it's actually kind of offensive to say to someone who's hurting, well, just change how you think about it. Well, it's not that easy sometimes. Xbox controllers, that's our next line of defense. Here you go. Have fun. Um, several different things have to happen at once. The body has to process it. The brain has to process what happened. And the story has to be given room to change. Yes, it's very offensive. So we can say all healing is released from the past. And that means... That doesn't mean that you just go, I'm going to tell a different story. You've got to process because the brain is still looping. And until you stop that loop, it's not going to change. You can tell yourself a different story, but your brain is still like, this, still, this isn't adding up. It's not making sense. I'm still dreaming about it. I still can't put it to rest. Um, helping the body with, <laughs> with dancing shaking the body there's uh koya has the shaking and there's other shaking systems of handling stress in the body um the body has to process the stress and then the mind has to feel enough of the emotions and process it in the body and then step back and say okay let's regroup let's look at what really happened and the act of writing it down is extremely powerful because of our mind, uh, our eye-hand coordination. The shaking really changes how people feel. Yes, it does. We get taught, we train ourselves out of shaking in response to trauma. Uh, so deliberately shaking when you feel upset or you're remembering something from the past. It, it, body doesn't know the difference. Body doesn't know time. So remembering stress feels the same as it happening in the month that, you know, even if it happened years ago. So shaking and, and bilateral tapping, EMDR, it are equally as powerful. Because your mind doesn't know. So when we say we have to change our story, we have to factor in all of those pieces. The body, the brain, the heart, the mind. Um, the words, all of those pieces have to be dealt with in order for that story to change and to change permanently. I mean, we can sort of tell ourselves different stories. You're welcome. You're welcome. I get, I get annoyed with um, cliches and kind of flippant attitudes toward this stuff. Sometimes Course in Miracles, sometimes um, Byron Katie's work. People can get kind of um, snotty and arrogant is the only thing I can think to call it. Good morning, Earthlet. Um, so I just want people to understand there's more to it than that. You can't just up in one day change your story. And if you try to do it and fail, entitled, I don't know, um, it doesn't matter. I. I just want people to understand that there's, even though I put something in the title like you changing your story, it doesn't mean that it's that simple. It seems disrespectful to say otherwise or to imply otherwise. Whoops. I turned off my alerts. I wonder why I got a Facebook thing. Well, I think if you've not experienced trauma, it can be difficult to understand. And, and I think if you haven't worked with people who've experienced some sort of trauma, um, it, it can be easy to oversimplify, I guess. And if you oversimplify, good morning, Sarah. Um, if you oversimplify the process of recovering from trauma, good morning, Um it's very debilitating to the person trying to overcome the trauma, I guess. Respect for the process has to be there. And everybody's process is different. So you can do the shaking, you can do the koya dancing. We were talking about koya shaking earlier, Sarah. Oh, thank 
you. Thank you. Um, we were talking about trauma and um, Koya and EMDR and bilateral tapping and things to do when the body is re-experiencing a trauma to help the body and brain process, produce the chemicals and go through the process of, yeah, they both have snotty noses. Somebody's, they're both snotty. Um, produce the chemicals and go through the process needed to put memories to rest in the brain so that then you can uh, rewrite your story. You need professionals. Oh, I'm sorry, your baby's snotty too. Oh, the body low, slow loop. That's a, a meditation body mind technique that you can find on Sarah's catch channel, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash thrive with Sarah. Um, I did that body slow, low loop thing, and it's very good. I didn't do it enough. I've done it once, so I need to do it more. Actually, let me make myself a note to be able to do it without following the instructions. So all healing is released from the past. Yes, it keeps them forever. You have to put hashtag catch in the title. And you have to connect your Periscope account to Catch, and then it will hold them for you. Um, they're also on your phone, usually. So does that make sense? Like, all healing is released from the past, and the process of releasing yourself from the past involves all those different factors. Writing a different story, allowing the body to process... Oh, you don't? You don't have to hashtag it and it will keep it? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I thought we had to put the hashtag catch in the title. That'd be great. That would save me more room. I could put more emojis. <laughs> emojis make your title stand out. Okay, good. Is that on Android 2? Oh, if you tweet it. Nice. Okay, good to know. Hey, Linda. I'm a little early. Um, so starting... Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I didn't know that. So starting first, meditating and connecting to Source and getting that sense of your connection to Spirit... And then going with the body and then rewriting your story is like a three-stage plan if you're trying to reprocess an event. So if you have something from the past that you're hanging on to that's stopping you from forgiveness, that's stopping you from moving forward, it's some, something that just feels like a weight on your soul or you know, a heaviness in your heart, try this process and see if you can sh release yourself from the past. In that way. Oh, most of the other text in here is just reads like gibberish, which is probably why Robert Holden only put that. Darn it! The notification whistle is making me upset. You have this feeling right now. Hey, mom. Twin day. One of them's back here on the treadmill. Avery. I think it's funny to scoot back and forth on the treadmill. I think that's been, um, I think they're imitating one of their moms walking on the treadmill. So just to recap, all healing is released from the past. The past does not exist except in our mind um, and our interpretation of the past. And that's what we can change. And it, we can change it. Now, if you do these things and you're still struggling, go to a EMDR therapist. You'll pay more per session, but you'll do a whole lot less sessions. And get someone who's EMDRIA certified. Even though I wasn't when I was doing it. They just started that. Um... So get your connection to spirit, 
feel the power that you have. Feel that connection to your soul and to all that is. Do some sh think, then bring up your event. Shake, shake it out. Do the slow bodies, low, slow loop. Do bilateral tapping. There's bilateral uh, sound recordings you can get. In my opinion, they they go a little too slow to be effective. Right now, I haven't heard one. There may be some out there. I'm telling you, I've only sampled a few. But this tapping works, and it's with you all the time. If you don't want to do this because you're out in public and you feel stressed, cross your arms. It helps if you're not chubby. <laughs> and you cross your arms. You can alternate tap your ribs. Boy, that lower scale is horrible. Alternate tap your ribs, or you can put your hands on your lap, on your legs, and alternate tap. Yeah, it's very similar. It's just faster. Do the do the tapping as long as you want. Do it till you want to stop. Um, so anytime you feel it, if it comes up or you're thinking about it, just tap while you're thinking about it. Do this while you're talking about it. Um, it's, it's similar effects of EMDR, but it's not so powerful that it's going to knock you into a place that you can't come out of. I mean, it's very mild. Teach it to children. So, um, it's very useful because it's, it's handy. And if you can use it while you're thinking about your Trump, whatever's stressing you out, Linda, anything, any past incident, anything that's bothering you, uh, we were talking about how you can't, you can only change the past in your mind and um, tapping can, tapping this way is fast. You, the, the EFT tapping works very, very well. I've used it plenty. I always recommend Brad Yates for tapping. If you want YouTube type stuff, I know there's people on Periscope. Brad Yates, I really have a lot of respect for and he has multiple, multiple scripts on YouTube. Oh, that's, I don't know if you can read that, but anyway. Brad Yates. Um, the thing is, is the bilateral tapping is just faster. It's just faster. The, whole, the thing is uh, changing how the brain is thinking about information is the bottom line. So you can do bilateral tapping. You can do EFT if you need more than that. Go to a therapist who's EMDR specialized. Yeah, change your story sounds trite when you just say, oh, just change your story, or you could see that differently. Or a lot of times you can just change your story. You can go, oh, that's not, there's like five different ways I could see that event. But in a traumatic event, something that keeps coming back and coming back and coming back, you have to do a little more. You have to take a few more steps to uh, help your brain and body put that to rest so that you can rewrite the story about that event and find a different angle to see it and find a, a greater, or not maybe greater, but a different way of understanding what happened to you. Those are the times when you, when you know when you've put it to bed, when it's not popping back in your mind without a trigger. It's when you're no longer having intrusive thoughts and when you can look at the event and you can find something useful that you can take out of it, then you know you, you've you put it to rest pretty much. Uh, when you can look back and say, while I'm not glad that happened and I'd rather it hadn't happened, uh, I can take these pieces out of it and use them, make them useful. Here. Here's an Xbox controller. You want it? <laughs> cool. Uh, I know, right? The socks are gone. I had to find other things to. I have a whole stack of stuff here. <laughs> oh. I know. The little squeaky girl voices are so cute. 
We have um, almond butter packets. We've got Ninja Red packets, which is a Young Living supplement thing. Uh, we have um, kitchen utensils. <laughs> I've got like a whole stack of stuff. We've got lids. All kinds of things that I can fling. Just like that. Send it flying across the room and they go chase it. Just like dogs. It's easy. <laughs> so any questions about that? How to deal with trauma? How to change your story? Oh, boy. Empty boxes are good. Hey, uh, Linda, the salt lamp store lady said if you leave the light on all the time even in puerto rico your thing your salt lamp should not melt i know right these are the best hit so they don't get them unless it's gg babysitting day so i keep these in reserve so when i need a distraction out come the spatulas do you leave yours on all the time and it still is melting? That's a bummer. Um, okay, so connect to source. Think about what happened. Do bilateral tapping. Tap on your legs if that's more comfortable. And then ask yourself, how can I see this differently? Okay, cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I posted on my blog last night about how teenagers are like feral cats. Yeah, uh, because of that discussion we had the other day, because it was so funny. And I hadn't posted on my blog in a while. Oh, sil silicone scrapers. That's a really good idea. My blog is cat-related stuff. You are my inspiration. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I put Tonka. Tonka, my cat Tonka makes a grumpy teenager face when I won't let him get on my laptop. So I put a caption on there that said, you're ruining my life. Because he gets really, uh, he, he gets mad. He'll sit there and mean mug me um, for a good five minutes when I won't let him step all over my laptop keyboard. Can you think of some events you can try this with? And then uh, let me know how it works for you. Something you're having trouble forgiving or something you're having trouble letting go of. Your bunny, <laughs> you got into it this morning. <laughs> trauma, trauma. Hanging on to the past ruins our present and our future. Or it can. What are you doing, baby? Snotty nose. Ugh. Oh, a pissy teenager. <laughs> okay. All healing is released from the past. The past only exists in our mind. Dried papaya. Mm. Per perfect perception. When you do all this, you should feel more whole. And you should be able to remember the event with some level of positivity. Anything else? If you guys are good, then uh, I can't believe we made it through a whole um, a whole morning scope without any. Um, well, that's not true. We had some distractions, but this went way better today. I did. I think I'm better prepared for them now. I like it. I think the light is a little too bright because it's really large. That dome is it's as big as this dog food bowl. I mean, it's huge. It's that big around. So the light is super bright. Hey, what's the tantrum about? Here you go. Dole that shit out piece by piece. <laughs> it's a 25 watt bulb. Yeah, it's pretty big. She gave me a 15 and a 25. It's a good day. It is a good day. Uh, I came in the door and Ashlyn was smiling and happy. Ashlyn's the little uh, more reserved one. And I feel like sometimes she forgets from one week to the next who I am. So we kind of have to have about a two-minute start over. What? Ew. Oh, her nose is so gross. Okay. I'm going to go and clean up snotty noses and um, 
take care of babies and do a diaper check. Oh, lovely. And she just did this. <sighs> Thank you for spending time with me. I'm so glad I don't have to wipe your snotty noses. I will kiss them after I clean their faces and tell them it's from you. <laughs> yeah, yuck. Okay, love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Oops. Let's see here. What are we doing? What are we doing? Thanks, Nina. See you later. Okay. Ah, let's try again. There it is. Okay, now bye. Woo! Poke you in the eye there. <laughs> let's try this. Mm-hmm. <laughs>